This is John at John's Films. I want to talk about video transcoding, transferring footage from one video codec to another. And this can have dramatic results when it comes to playback on your computer while you're editing. So really, what is that? Well, it is taking footage, which is a movie, and keeping the same movie, but changing the way in which it is stored on your hard drive. Now when you do this, you can make it so that it's easier for the processor to read, you could make it so the file size was smaller, that way you could transport it across uh, the network easier, or you could store it on disk with using less disk space. There's a variety of reasons you might want to do this, and you need to be aware of what's happening when this, when this occurs. Transcoding is a simple process that runs through an encoder on your computer, and it chooses the raw footage here on the left as an input as well as a codec. This is a coding decoding algorithm that explains how to store the bits onto the disk for use with that codec. The encoder puts those two things together and generates an output file which is an encoded form of the first movie you pushed in. Now why might you want to do that? When we talked we might want to save storage space on a disk which means when the movie is played back the processor on the computer fills in some of the gaps by inferring what goes between each of the different pixels. Or you might want to make it easier for the processor to read by filling in those pixels during your encode or your transcode so that when it's playback time it's easier for the computer to play back the footage. Now in a lot of forum posts and a lot of places you see people complaining their computer isn't fast enough to run what they're trying to run while they're trying to edit their footage. Well this can be a solution. So today I'll show you how to encode or transcode footage from one codec to another and we can talk about some that are easier for your computer to play than others. Here's how to do it in DaVinci Resolve. And here we are in DaVinci Resolve 15. I have added some clips into my media pool and I'm here on the edit tab you can see at the bottom. I'm gonna take the items which seem to be playing back slowly on my computer and I'm going to go to file and media management. Now the media management has a couple different options. I can copy media from one location to another for instance a remote drive to my local drive, move it to faster storage. Now that I'm in the transcode panel you'll see I can choose where I want my output so when it merges as we saw earlier when it merges a codec with the footage that it's taking in where do we want it to put it and so I browsed that and I'm gonna to browse to a location on my computer that I use for output and there we go and then I have some options I can use the selected timeline clips down here the ones that have footage in it I can transcode all the media only the media that's been used or I can trim it and manage it then I then I scroll down inside that panel so you get the general idea we're gonna take files that are difficult for the computer to edit and we're going to make them easier for it to edit by changing the codec that they're stored with now there's actually an easier way to handle this I could encode it by clicking start it would encode all of the footage that I passed to it and it would store it where I told it to. I could then link that footage back to the footage in my media pool and edit against the easier files then finally render against those that were originally in the pool. That's a lot of clicking and work though. What I'd rather do is use a really neat feature that they've put into DaVinci Resolve and now that we understand the theory and why I think it's pretty neat to see how it works. You can right click on any amount of footage that you got. A clip here in your media pool or one that you already put on your timeline and click generate optimized media. Now I would generally recommend you do it against your timeline if you know that you've got your your duration set because it'll encode what's on the timeline and what's used rather than maybe an extra hour and a half worth of extra footage sitting in your media pool. So you right click on it and you choose generate optimized media. Now what this does is effectively transcode and you say, well, that's great. Where'd all the options go? In fact, the options, in fact, the options exist right inside of your project settings. If you hit your project settings in your file menu and you choose master settings, 
you'll see here optimized media and render cache. This talks about what it would transcode to should you ask it to optimize media for you. You can choose to change the resolution, which can make it easier for the computer to process it by going down in resolution, or you can change the format which it is stored in. In this case, I'm letting it choose automatically based on hardware specifications, but it's always good to know where you can go to change it. So again, right click on the footage, go to generate optimized media. It will generate the file for you in the background, and it will use it as you're editing scrubbing through the media pool as you're going through your edit tab fusion and coloring when you get to delivery you then have an option and that option in delivery you may not have ever noticed it but it's down here in advanced settings use optimized media as this is in the delivery tab it's asking do you want me to use the optimized media when i render your final project I'd leave it unchecked because it would potentially use a lower quality media than what you originally got in from your film crew. So, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget, the reason this happens is to make things easier on your computer, and the best way to do it is to right click inside your timeline and choose Generate Optimized Media. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.